In the final days of the Clone Wars, General Grievous moved to Utapau, where he was eventually confronted by Obi-Wan Kenobi. After an intense fight with the cyborg Separatist, Obi-Wan was able to defeat General Grievous, putting a swift end to Separatist leadership. But what happened to General Grievous's body and mask after his death? I'm going to break down exactly what happened to Grievous's body and armor after his defeat to Obi-Wan and why it is so creepy. Before we get into it, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more awesome Star Wars lore content. Immediately after the call for Order 66 was given to all clones and the creation of the Empire, a squad of clone troopers from the 212th who remained on Utapau after Grievous's fight with Kenobi were able to recover General Grievous's body. Following this, his mask, body, armor, and starfighter were stored in a secret Imperial storehouse on Utapau, where it would be guarded by the elite clone shadow troopers. If you haven't seen my video on the clone shadow troopers yet, you should definitely check that out out because they are some of the most elite and covert troopers you will ever come across. I'll leave a link in the description and a card on screen now if you want to check that out. After the clone shadow troopers stationed on Utapau remained on duty, guarding the storehouse for many years, Grievous's body was collected by a well-known cyberneticist called Nikolai Kinnisworthy. Kinnisworthy hoped to use the dead body of General Grievous for his newly created NK cybernetic project, in which he hoped to create a highly advanced droid copy of General Grievous. Eventually, the doctor was incredibly successful in creating destroyed copy of General Grievous and put it into action on the front lines of any battle he deemed it necessary to use. The General Grievous droid eventually enjoyed a very short life for itself in the Midril Caverns on the planet Kashyyyk, but was tragically destroyed by a group of anonymous scoundrels soon after. After brutally killing the droid copy of General Grievous, the scoundrels stole the droid's weaponry and anything else valuable that was attached to its body, including his traditional Kalish war mask. These guys were savages. General Grievous's traditional Kalish war mask eventually ended up on the invisible market after this, which was a market even more illegal and dangerous than the black market. Let me know down below if you want to hear more about the types of illegal and dangerous products sold on the invisible market. On this invisible market, the mask was purchased by a high-ranking admiral in the Imperial Navy because of its incredible artistic properties and historic value. It's not fully clear who exactly this admiral was, but it's strongly hinted to be Grand Admiral Thrawn because of his deep respect for history and art. Let me know down below if you agree that it probably is Thrawn, or do you think it could be another Imperial Admiral? About 50 years after Grievous's demise, he became a god to the people of his homeworld, Kali, where he was worshipped by the Kalish people. A temple was even built on his homeworld to honor their new god, General Grievous. On top of this, many citizens of the galaxy remembered General Grievous as a brilliant commander and a merciless enemy. Following that, two cyborg models named the Terra Trooper and the Terra Bio Droids were created in the image of the fallen General Grievous. You might remember those if you've played the Force Unleashed games. Finally, many years after Grievous's death, he was featured in a painting called Utapau Surrenders, which depicted his brutal slaughter and harsh takeover of the planet during the final days of the Clone Wars. So that is everything that happened to General Grievous' body after his death at the hands of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.